like the spike for minimal 3dp and today we're going to take a look at ellis's print tuning guide so let's go ahead and get started As we approach the Christmas season, a lot of people are going to get new 3D printers. And one of the first things you should do with any 3D printer when you set it up, and periodically throughout the life of the printer, is tune it. If you do some research online, you'll find one of the most popular and thorough guides out there for tuning your printer is Ellis's Print Tuning Guide. And I'm putting a link in the video description. And even if I go over and take a look at the calibration in Orca Slicer, you'll see there's different places where they actually reference Ellis's print tuning guide. Now, they put their own spin on some of these tests, but still they're basing it off Ellis's work. And I need to say that this tuning guide is really awesome and thorough and very helpful for helping you figure out what you need to do. Now, for those of you following my channel, over the past, oh, it's got to be four or five months, I've been putting together a Voron printer. Although I haven't posted all the videos of the build yet, I'm still working on editing, I have completed the build, and now I need to tune that printer. So with that in mind, what I plan on doing is using the Voron printer as the base, and I'm going to go through the print tuning guide and tune that printer. And hopefully you'll find this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to post them below. So with that being said, let's go ahead and switch over to the printer and get started. Now, as noted in the introduction to the print tuning site, you only need the following tools. You need a ruler, some tape, maybe a marker, and then maybe a piece of paper. So with that in mind, I have all those tools gathered and We'll use those throughout these tests. I'm going to point out the ruler I'm using. I bought these a while ago. And what I've done is I bought a metric, metric and standard ruler, but I like to get a ruler that basically the measurement starts right at the end here, so there's no little gap. I have several rulers that there's a space in between the end and where it starts measuring. I like this because when I put it on the printer, I just lay it flat and I'm good to go. Now I'm also going to apologize I'm doing this. There is some glare. You might wind up seeing a little bit more of my bald head than you'd like. And for that, I apologize. Now I'm just going to start by going to the tuning link. And we're going to start with the extruder calibration. Now you'll notice there's some notes here. And first thing we'll notice is this compatible with Clipper, Marlin, and Riprap. The other thing we're going to notice is that there's an extrusion multiplier that is per filament, and then this extruder calibration. What extruder calibration is doing is creating some general settings that are good across the board for whatever filament you may be using. So as I said, we're gonna start with that. Now, in the case of, do you do this hot or cold? In the case of a Bowden tomb, it's probably easier just to do it cold. That way you don't have to worry about clogs or anything else. In the case of direct drive, it's significantly easier just to do it with the hot end hot and actually running filament through it and all that good stuff. Now you do chance a clog here, but I'll be honest, I've never had a clog when I was doing this step, so I feel pretty good. So I'm gonna start by just loading some filament, and in my case, I'm just gonna load some PLA plus and then we'll start with the steps of the test. Now, in my case, I'm going to do this for Clipper, but if you're interested, there are the steps for both Riprap and for Marlin if they vary. But let me go ahead and get that filament loaded and then we'll start the test. Okay, so I have the filament loaded in and everything's looking good there. The filament went through nice and easy, so that was good. And what we're going to do is start with making sure the max extrude only distance, I'm going to copy this command, is set to 101 or higher in our printer.config. And again, this is for Clipper. So I'm going over to the printer, machine, 
printer.config, I'm going to scroll down to the extruder section. And we're just looking to see if it's already in here. I'm not seeing it. So let's add a line and then paste that value in. And they say do 101. So let's just set it at 101. And then hit save and restart. And that will restart the printer and that'll take a minute. Okay, so I've rebooted Clipper and we've done the max extrude only distance. We've set that. And now I'm just going to simply heat to my printing temperature, my hot end. So we'll set that and let's let that heat up. Now you have two choices for this next step. I've heated my hot end to the printing temp I use, which for PLA is about 205. You could run these G-code commands, or in my case, I can go over to the web interface and I can extrude a little bit of filament. Now I'm doing that for two reasons. One, I want to make sure that filament's actually moving through the hot end. I have it loaded appropriately. But then also, I want to check when I do the extrude to make sure it's actually extruding. Occasionally you can have in your printer.config or even in Marlin, you can have it where the extruder basically is flipped. So instead of extruding, it's retracting. Instead of retracting, it's extruding. Right now, they say do a little bit of filament. Since I'm sitting across the room, I usually do about 50 millimeters. I'm just going to hit extrude and then go over to the printer. And I just make sure that this is actually going through. And it did extrude some filament. So I think we're doing pretty good. Now I'm just going to clean this filament out here, get that out of the way. And I'm ready for the actual test. So I need to make a measurement now. So we have two choices. We can make a mark on the filament or as recommended by the website, you can put a piece of tape at the 120 mark and then move this up. I'm just going to measure and transfer the tape over to the filament. So now the tape is at the 120 mark. So you can see it. And let me move the camera back a little bit so you can see it. So there it is, the 120 mark. So that's 120 millimeters right there. So that's pretty simple. And then once we have that, we're going to run it through the extruder. Now, the easiest way to do this is we have our commands. And we need to extrude one millimeter of filament. Now, the easiest way to do this is to actually use the commands in this case. So we're just going to grab these commands. I'm going to copy the G code commands, go over to my console, paste them in, and run it. Now, I'm pointing out that what this is doing, although you can extrude filament from the interface, you want to make sure that you're extruding 100 millimeters of filament one millimeter a second. And I just think it's better to use the explicit commands. That way, it's just explicitly done. And I don't have to worry about it not being exactly right. So right now, I'm running it through. And if you look carefully on screen, you'll see that very slowly it's pulling out filament. This is exactly what I want. And it's going nice and slow. And the reason why it's going slow is that we're doing one millimeter a second. So let that continue to run for a couple minutes. And once that's done, we'll take our measurement. Now what I normally do is I normally touch the filament just to make sure it's totally done. And now we're just going to measure how much filament is 
left between where I measured and the tape. So let's go over and let's make that measurement. That looks like that's 10, 11, 12, 13. So I have 13 millimeters of filament remaining. So in my case, I'm horrible with equations and whenever I have to think about anything. So I have my clipper calibration spreadsheet I'm using and I'm just gonna fill in all my numbers. I need to get the previous rotation distance. So I just open up my printer.config. I'm gonna copy this value and then paste it right here into the spreadsheet. I'm going to change the value here to 13. And my new rotation distance is 22.791. So really easy, really easy. So let's take that number. 22.791, and I'm just going to change that over here in my printer.config. Hit save and restart. So that has given me my new extruder calibration and rotation distance. So I'm ready to move on to the next step. We have that first test done and rather than do all the tests simultaneously, I'm just going to break this into different videos. That way it's easier bite-sized chunks. So we've completed this first test and for the next set of tests, we're going to work on getting that perfect first layer. So if you have any questions or comments, please post below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Please also don't hesitate if you have an idea for a video, let me know, particularly over the next couple of weeks. I'm going to be recording a lot and I'm looking for new ideas. Anyway, thanks. Have a good day. Bye. This is Mike again. If you're having trouble with your 3D printer, I'm putting a link in the video description of how you can schedule a 15-minute consult with me. I'm more than happy to sit down with you, see if we can figure out what the problem is, see if we can get your printer rolling. Also, if you would like to support the channel, I've enabled memberships. And so for a small monthly contribution, you can help support my work. Now, ideally what I'm going to do is use any money and same for the advertising I get for the channel. I'm gonna use that to buy more 3D printers and more equipment and more technology that I could use here on the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.